Hey, 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 it's Crown Talk Time with Burgundy. I'm your host, Burgundy Mallory White, and welcome to the Crown Talk with Burgundy YouTube channel. I am very, very ecstatic to have the amazing and phenomenal Krizna Goodwin with Goodwin Photography. They have won multiple awards with Pageant Planet, Beauty It's Everywhere, at international pageants, national, state, regional, and local pageants. So later tonight, we will get to speak with Krizna on the specific topics at hand that I'm about to tell you about. And I know that we just had our pre-show and whew, we got some hot topics for everyone this evening. So I'm very, very excited to have her on the show. So some of the specific topics that we will be talking and discussing about is it choosing the photographer, how to prepare, why you need to read a contract and set clients up for success. Choose someone with a solid reputation. That's super important. <laughs> we want to make sure that the pageant, uh, kind of talk about the pageant industry for vendors, myths, and what we really do. And we're going to kind of step out of the photography talk a little bit and kind of step into more pageantry talk a little bit on that one. And then where Goodwin Photography will be, the pageants, on location, sessions, and so much more. So you don't want to miss any of that. However, before we get into Talking to Krizna from Goodwin Photography, we do have just a couple of announcements. So we'd like to say congratulations to all of the current CTWV Sapphire clients that have a title and won a title recently. So we have Brooklyn, which is our Miss Fierce International Elementary 2023. Isabella, your senior Miss Fierce International 2023. Coralie, Miss Tennessee Preteen Grand Supreme 2023. Miranda, Miss Southern States Modern Woman Grand Supreme 2023, Olivia Little Miss Tennessee Beauty Supreme, Britta Miss Tennessee Festival's five-year-old divisional queen, plus all um, they all won runway awards, which we worked really, really hard on those, and so many other awards um, at the Miss AmeriFest National Pageant, which was Tennessee and Southern States Festival's pageant. I would like to thank all of our quintessential and amazing sponsors for always sponsoring CTWB. If you want to be a CTWB sponsor, please don't hesitate to contact us at crowntalkinc at gmail.com. Do you want to be the next Miss Crown Talk? Yes, we will be having the Miss Crown Talk pageant live this year. You heard me right. It is going to be completely live. We are hosting the Miss Crown Talk with Burgundy live pageant in person July 7th through the 8th, 2023 in Knoxville, Tennessee. So kind of moving right along, I know that you've seen a little bit of our media at the Miss Tennessee USA pageant this a couple of weekends ago. So thank you to Arabella, our junior media team, and Aaron, our senior media team member, for covering the 30th anniversary of the Miss Tennessee USA and Miss Teen Tennessee USA pageant. So thank you, ladies, so much for being so helpful and being able to cover all the stories. You'll kind of get some highlights of the winners and their first look of being Miss Tennessee USA and Miss Tennessee Team USA. So we're very, very excited to have that opportunity. And congratulations to him and the whole organization for a wonderful 30th year. If you want to be on our radio talk show or even be on the YouTube show, please contact us on our Facebook page or email at crowntalkinc at gmail.com. And our Facebook is just simply Crown Talk with Burgundy. And that's B-Y-R-G-U-N-D-Y. Okay, so enough announcements for now, because I know we are all here for the lovely Krizna. <laughs> so let's focus our attention to the queen behind the camera, the one and only Krizna Goodwin with Goodwin Photography. Hello. Hello. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to have you on the show. Like, I love that whole queen behind the camera. I like that. I'm going to have to hashtag are. that. I'll, I, mean, I call you the queen behind the camera because I've, no, I've seen you behind the camera and just the general <laughs> and pageantry. We're not going to tell my age. <laughs> Hey, if we're talking about age, I got you all beat. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you really are truly the queen behind the camera. And if anyone is tuning in right now, please, please, please head over to all of their social media sites. And I will start posting those down below because you're going to want to see what I mean. Oh, my goodness. All of these photos that you take are always flawless. Well, <laughs> like, yeah. 
Like, well, I mean, look at the poster behind you. Oh my but, goodness. But, but I have to, I have to also say, I usually have fl pretty flawless clients to begin with. So, you know, they make my job pretty darn easy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, before we get into some questions and topics that we've been talking about, I do want to have you tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. I hate this question because I really never seem to know what to say. Um, but uh, I've been in pageant land for 30 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm really giving away my age. Um, <laughs> uh, started off started off uh, just zipping dresses at backstage at a pageant, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then just grew to love it in, uh, in one organization. And then when I got married, my husband had a love for photography, had, mm -hmm. had, had that for a long, long time, uh, since high school and, and just taught me how to do it. And we had a very thriving wedding photography business. And then mm -hmm. I said, you know, I think I want to have my own prelim pageant. And so I started doing that. And then I retired from that and just decided that I wanted to do headshots. Um, so I've been doing this now for about, well, let's see, it'll be 18 years we've been married. I think I may have to ask him, <laughs> um, but I've been doing this for 16, 17 wow. years. Um, oh and then in pageant land, since I was basically 25, I, I, I don't care to tell my age. I'm 55 years old. Um, and fabulous looking beautiful. Well, you know, it's cause I got this great light over here. Yes. <laughs> our big, our big <laughs> ring light. I've got great lighting to make the skin glowy. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And, and I, I developed a love of, uh, just making a girl feel good about herself. And, and, you know, and I saw that and I saw how excited the, the girls would get when you'd take a picture and you'd show them what, you know, what that glam version of them look like. And I'm not talking about the baseball cap wearing version of, you know, our everyday selves because we're, we're women. And so we're constantly uh, evolving, you know, by the moments. Um, but I love to see what the glam version of the girl looked like. And that's what I was all about. And, and so it, just kind of morphed into what it is now. Um, and a few years ago, I met a, um, I met a, a fitness coach and he had a hashtag called John's jewels and he was a, he helped girls with their fitness. And I said, yeah. I need a hashtag and was just talking to him. And he said, well, what about good one girl? And then the good one girl hashtag brand was born. So and that's, that's how that was. That's yeah. how that, that's where that came from. That came from John. Um, and, um, it just, you, you know, it just, it, nobody was really doing a lot of that at the time. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, that is so cool. And so, yeah, um, uh, that's kind of where that came from. And, and I took some headshots of him and we had some, we had some, um, like big crystals and when he had some awards and things that he had won and then we had little those little diamond crystals on the table and yeah um, it was really cool and I was like we need a hashtag for me and that's kind of how it got born I, I believe that was in Richmond Virginia when I was I shot him was in Richmond Virginia but yeah that's where that came from and oh, and so I'm continually learning I'm continually evolving I'm continually looking at at, at the trends and things like that um uh, and I want to and I want to say this there were two photographers that influenced me. Um, and those two photographers, first of all, was David Bartley. Um, I used to take my girls to David Bartley. Uh, he's no longer with us. Um, he passed away several years ago, but I just loved what he did because the, the way that he retouched the photo was with hair and makeup and lighting. It was okay. insane there. Cause there was no Photoshop back then. Yeah. And then the second one was when I saw a picture of one of my dear friends, uh, Kaylee Schwab, she okay. had gotten her pictures made with a Nashville um, photographer by the name of Christy Belcher, who's still phenomenal. Yeah. Today. And I saw that work and I said, I, I want to, I want to be at that level. And yeah. uh, I met her, I met her at a Miss USA pageant a few years back. I was, I'm going to say, gosh, it's probably 20, maybe 14. And wow. um, I had never met her before, but I met her there. And so uh, those two, those two people really have influenced me and in what I, what it is that I'm doing. So I don't know, maybe I've influenced somebody else out there. I don't know, but they influenced I think me. It, look, we have 
new people that's coming in all the time. So you never know. And I'm pretty right. sure you have. <laughs> you, you, you don't, you never know. You never know. So, I mean, that's just a little bit kind of about how, you know, I ended up where I am and, yeah. um, you know, I laid down the wedding camera um, and I just said, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, you know, my husband, he basically went from being an assistant district attorney to a criminal court judge. And, you know, and that's, that was a completely not a career change. It was what he had always wanted to do, but he reached that pinnacle of his career. And um, I didn't want to be at weddings on the weekends without him. And so I just said, you know, I'm just going to focus on just pageant headshots. Yeah. And, um, and so that's what it is. As a matter of fact, that's, kind of where you go to pageantheadshots.com and you yes, get to yeah <laughs> I was gonna ask because that is the um when I looked up your website I was like I was like wait a minute I always just kind of click on a link or something uh -huh. and I was like wait a minute it's called pageant headshots uh-huh yeah yeah so I bought that I bought that URL several years ago and okay. you know it's funny because it sat for about probably four years before I ever did anything with it and I don't know why I, maybe just because I got busy you know doing all the other things that I do mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah so pageantheadshots.com pageantphotography.com and pageantevent.photography.com oh wow okay yeah. so I hope you all heard that <laughs> I only have one link and Instagram and Facebook to give you all. But again, um, after the show, I will go on there and I will add all this information so that you can make sure that you're able to book at any of the links, um, yeah. social media sites. So we just want to make sure that you have so many navigation ways to get your photos booked. Or maybe you never know, she may be at your pageant as a director. Never know. Never know. Okay. <laughs> um, so again, we have so many topics to go over. The we first do. one is yeah. choosing uh, the photographer. That's huge. Okay. We just got to start off there because choosing a photographer is very vital when trying to get pageant headshots. So why is it important to pick the right photographer? I, I think it's important to pick the right photographer, Burgundy, because, you know, and, and I speak, I speak for myself, you know, I don't, I'm not going to speak for every photographer out there because everybody's different, but yeah. I just think you want to choose somebody who has been in the industry, who mm -hmm. understands what a pageant headshot is, um, who understands that, you know, maybe it, maybe it can be moody, but it needs to be moody in the right way. Um, yeah. Because as we know, pageant land is an entity in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just going to your family photographer, they may be able to do a great shot for you. Um, but I don't, you, you know, they may not necessarily understand the in and outs of yeah. pageant land. Um, and that is just, I mean, I'm going to say it like it is. You guys are picky and that's okay. Yeah. You can be picky, you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, they should, you know, because I mean, you're spending a lot of money for, for this. So um, find somebody who's going to be picky, find somebody that's detail oriented, find somebody yeah. that's going to give you what you're looking for, um, mm -hmm. that you can have a conversation with that you connect with, um, that you can have fun with. Um, you know, uh, if, if your pageant says we want, this kind of thing, have that conversation so that you can get that. There's one particular pageant instant, for instance, that, you know, you, they are very, very specific about what they want um, mm -hmm. their headshots to look like. And you need to know that. And mm -hmm. if you don't know that, then, you know, then you need to be as a photographer asking questions. Yeah. So, you know, I want to do that. I want to, I always send a questionnaire out because I want to know cool. what, pageant are you doing or going to be doing because if you tell me that you're going to do let's say I, i'm going to use this i'm going to use national american miss yeah well if you're going to do national american miss i'm going to know that that's pretty i'm going to say tame um and and that's a probably a good word to use it's not going to be as glamorous on the makeup and the hair yes. now if you tell me you're getting ready to go to um usa yeah. So, so you just need to make sure that you're communicating um, mm -hmm. what it is that you're looking for uh, with that photographer that you're considering 
Um, and then um, obviously you need to think about your budget. I mean, you may not be able yeah. to, you may love X, Y, and Z photographer, but you may not be able to afford X, Y, and Z. Yeah. There are plenty of us out there in all kinds of different budgets. So, you know, um, and if you love somebody and you really want to work with that person, then just save your money. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I love what you said, kind of going back to it. You, you've said a couple of things, which one of them is talking about connection. And we're going to get ready to get back on that sub topic and that subject, yes. but also communicating, communicating what you want. I know that I have a lot of my clients that will come to me and they're like, OK, we're going for this pageant. And then I look at their headshots and I'm like, OK, we need to get some new headshots. And then I look at the type of pageant they're going to. And then I'm like, OK. You can go to whoever you want. However, you need to tell them what you need. This is the pageant yes. I'm attending and this is the pageant and this is how their headshots look. Yes. And again, it yes. doesn't need to be night and day and you're going to a USA and you look, you know, like you're going to National American Miss. It's not going to be OK. And your photo is not going to stand out. You're no. not going to get the photogenic award and you can't blame the photographer. No, no, you can't. And, and, and the, the fact is, is that, you know, it, I'm not sure what just happened there. I just lost, I just lost my lights. Um, oh no. Yeah. That was very strange. Um, yeah. The light just went out anyway. Um, well, now we don't have beautiful light anymore. But no, um, we can still see your beautiful face. <laughs> um, as long as you can still see me, that's okay. Um, I, I think that, I think that it's very important um, to, to have that communication. I think mm -hmm. it's important to look at last year. I don't think that that means you need to mimic exactly what mm -hmm. last year's was. Um, you, you don't want it to look exactly like last year's person. You know, you're not trying to be the same girl last year, but you definitely want to, um, you, you want to make sure that it, it's, what they're expecting. I guess yeah. that makes that, that make, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yes. 100%. And kind of going to that next question that we had from one of our Instagram followers and they've asked, how can you see if you connect with a photographer? And I know that you kind of touched a little bit on there, but me and you kind of talked about that in our pre-show. Yeah. How well, do you think? Well, it's, 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 that's an interesting, that, that's very interesting. I, I think you have to, you have to have a conversation. Um, yeah. I just literally had somebody in my studio a few days ago who, you know, I've been shooting this young lady since she's 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I definitely had that connection with her. You know, I know that people, when they want to bounce around and they want to do other things and, you know, they want to go see other people. And I think, I think you should definitely do some of that because yeah. you, you need to see what you like and what you don't. Um, but I think you have to have the conversation. Um, you have to sit down and say, this is, these are the pageants that I'm doing. This is what I'm looking for. This is, um, this is why I need this. Yes. And, and then talk about the looks, talk about the outfits you're going to bring. Um, now, with that being said, I'm going to have a rough idea in my head of kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. But I may, ch I may change my mind because, <laughs> they may bring an outfit and I go, Oh wow. And it just may click. <laughs> yeah. I, and you know, and sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it happens just because it, it just happens, um, yeah. you know, uh, but they may have so something, uh, you know, uh, and then they may, you know, hopefully if we've had the conversation, they've brought yeah. the appropriate clothes with them, but yeah, I, I think it's important to have that chat. Um, it's important to have that talk mm -hmm. so that, that both of you guys, and I hate to use this cliche, but are on the same page. No, you have to be, cause if you're, if you said something earlier, you said you had, um, Something that you you have a 30, 30, 30 ruler. Yes. What was that? I wanted you to say it on the show, girl. <laughs> okay. So my 30, 30, 30, you know, when you're breaking down a dollar bill, you 33.3, 33.3 and 33.3. Yes. Well, I say 30, 30, 30. And, and any makeup artist that's worked with me, which I work, I work with multiples that they've usually heard this, but it's 30% what, the makeup artist brings to the table. 
Yeah. It's 30% of what I'm bringing to the table and mm -hmm. it's 30% of what the client. And if you've got 90% of that, to me, you can have a good headshot. You can have something that's going to do a great job for you. Sometimes you get that 10% extra. When you get that 10% extra, it takes you up into the stratosphere. And I love when I get that 10% extra. You don't always get it and, yeah. and that's okay. Um, but sometimes you, you get that 10%. But mm -hmm. if, if somebody is lacking on their end, you know, yeah. whether that's me, whether that's the makeup artist or whether that's the client, then it can be a reflection in mm -hmm. the photo. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so to me, it's always a partnership. I'm partnering with that makeup artist. I'm partnering with that client to bring the best that I can out of them. And the makeup mm -hmm. artist wants to do the same thing. You know, the makeup artists don't always get the credits that they deserve, but yeah. if it wasn't for them, I can't be as good as my, at my job. Yeah. No. So, and I, I, I love that. When you said that, I was like, I noted, I was like, I got a reminder to say, it because I think that is a phenomenal rule when you are thinking headshots when you're about to head to a photographer or, you know, anybody that yep. is going, you need to have, everybody needs to be on, as you said, the same page. Um, and before we move on to our next um, topic, and actually this kind of leads right into it. Uh, our next topic is choosing someone with, um, you know, a solid reputation. Um, now I've never had the opportunity to physically have a headshot with Krizna, which is, we got some things coming up. <laughs> we got some things coming up. Um, but I've never gotten an opportunity. However, with me knowing some of the girls that she shot, me actually being in a pageant that she has hosted um, way back in the day, um, being, you know, being able to see how she works, not only on location while she is working with a pageant system, but also with, you know, in the studios and seeing those behind the scene photos and seeing how the girls really connect with her. I'd love to say this just because I have a very broad variety of people that's watching. She's very diverse. Goodwin photography is very diverse. And I, I specifically look, look at that, especially being a woman of color to see she has people that are able to do any type of nationality. Um, she has different type of hair and makeup artists. And again, it kind of goes back with that 30, 30, 30, making sure that everything comes together. I um, mean, being on one accord instead one page. So if you look at all her photos, she is capturing that in every photo with every type of nationality and that diversity just it's up here. And you don't get that a lot with a lot of photographers. So I, I did want to say. I appreciate you saying that, oh, that, 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 that really, on. truly, that really, <laughs> yeah, my husband, I sent him a text message. I said, can you come out now? So he turned, came and turned my light back on so I can look pretty again. Uh, <laughs> um, it was too much glam for it. It couldn't handle it. Um, <laughs> I love it. Handle. Well, it found out, the light found out that the Barbie dog at Pals is back and it went, whoa, I got to go. Okay. It was like. Side note, everybody, if you have never been to PALS, P-A-L-S, you have to go. You have to. You have to. Yeah. You have to. I had oh, to my gosh. I had to segue the PALS in there. Maybe maybe next time they'll sponsor us. Maybe we can get them to sponsor us. PALS, please sponsor Crowd Talk with Perkins. Yeah. <laughs> the sandwiches, the hot dog. The hot dog. Yeah, we don't need the to be tea. talking about that. Not with pageant girls and all. Yeah, no. Um, no, um, you, um, I appreciate you saying that Burgundy because, um, I, I have, you know, I, I built my brand with, um, a makeup artist by the name of Shamel McKenzie and, and Shamel taught me that anybody that sits in her chair and she's a licensed cosmetologist, she said, Krista, she said, when I worked at the Mac counter. And, 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 I, and I, I hope she doesn't mind me telling this, this story. Um, when, when she worked at the mat counter, anybody that came in, she needed to be able to do anybody that she that came in when she got her cosmetology license, you know, mm -hmm. she needed to be able to do any kind of hair, anybody that sat in her chair, she would tell yes. me, I have to be able to cater to whoever it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what color their skin are. It doesn't matter, you know, what texture of their hair. Yes. And so that was one of the things that she instilled in me when we were working together. And, and so, you know, I want to make sure that I'm working with licensed, you know, cosmetologists, people that understand different hair textures and understand yeah. different skin because, you know, light absorbs differently on your skin than it does on mine. Yeah. And, 
and yeah. and so for me, from my perspective, I have to make sure that I'm compensating for that as well. I don't mm -hmm. always get it right. I'm the first one to say I don't always get it right, but I try my hardest because I don't want anybody to ever walk in the door and and go, oh, okay, is she gonna be able to shoot me? Okay, yes, and you don't want those questions raised, and when you go on your social media sites, you project that, that you can do any type of people. Thank I've you. seen people of Asian descent. I've seen people of different nationalities on your social media sites, on your website, because you show that diversity, showing yeah. that I can do it. So again, it's back to that reputation. Your reputation speaks for itself through the photos alone. We haven't even gotten to talking to the girls and stuff. Yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing. I mean, you you know, you're talking about trying to find the the right person. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's what it is. I think you 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 know, girls are very savvy. I mean, go research that social media. You know, uh, have conversations. You know, send emails. Um, you know, talk to other girls who have been um, because you'll find out. You know, talk to the makeup artists that have worked with that photographer. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, are they respecting the the makeup artists? Are they respecting the people? Or is it just I'm just trying to take your money? And I don't mean that it, there are just photographers out there doing that. And I certainly don't. Want to you know sound that way but you know find out if that person is in your corner if you're going to you know if if that person is truly in it to make you the best version of you or are they just there just because they was okay I'm going to take the picture and then I'm gone or you know I, so I just I, I appreciate you saying that because I I try I try really hard and I think that's part of my personality is I'm a people pleaser. So I don't like to make anybody upset. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all you people pleasers out there, y'all, you know, you don't want to make anybody upset, but I also just have to recognize that I'm in the pageant industry and I'm not, I'm a pineapple and you might not like pineapple. And if you don't, well, then you probably don't want to come see me. <laughs> You know what, but you have to be like that, especially with, you know, individuals like us that we are people pleasers, but at the end of the day, we want what's best for the clients at yes. the end of the day yes, um, for sure. when it comes to. And so when you are looking for that person, please, or, you know, that photographer, please do your research. There may yes. be some things that you're like, okay, I want X, Y, and Z. Okay. During those X, Y, and Z's make, talk to the photographer, communicate with them, see if that's something that they offer. It may be on their website. It may be on their social media sites. It, you know, you know, talk to a girl right. that looks like you. Um, that's maybe had that experience and, you know, crown shots, headshots, you know, whatever that's going to be. Do your research. And, and here's just, the other, here's the other thing too, Burgundy. Mm -hmm. If you hear something that maybe might come across as negative. Yeah. Don't just X that person off. Mm. You know what mm. I'm saying? Don't just do that. Pick up the phone and have a conversation. And I'm not talking about just me. I'm talking about anybody in the industry. Have a conversation because that there may be something to that that you don't know about. You know, it's just like when you're deciding that you're going to do a pageant or not. Well, such and such didn't have a great experience. And that's the only person you talk to. And then you decide, OK, since she didn't have a great experience, I'm not going to go. Well, you really didn't do your research if you did that, because, you know, if if you know, get specifics, if, if yeah. they're saying that they didn't have a good experience with me or with another photographer or with We're a project leader. Yeah. Do that research, do your due diligence. And, and if, if you still want to go because you just can't get that, per, that out of your mind, pick up the phone and call and say, this is what I've heard. And can you expand upon it? Yeah. It may be that that person goes, I didn't even have a clue that they felt that way. Because a lot of times people, people will, you know, they'll, they'll talk about great, wonderful things, um, you know, when you're, when they're here and you're, they're right in front of you, but when they leave, you know, they may have not enjoyed something, but if they don't tell you, yeah. because that's something that I can also fix, you know, and we as human beings can fix things, but you can't fix it if you don't know. Exactly. Now, now, now I'm now I'm getting into philo uh, not philosophy, but I'm getting into therapy, and I know that's probably not what this is about. Y'all probably gonna get a little therapy tonight too. <laughs> you know what? We all need it in the passion industry. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you're in the pageant industry, you need you need it. You know, yes. this, this is what we're on here for because these are questions that people you don't think about on an everyday basis, especially when it comes to photo shoots. Sometimes, and I, I love just kind of going back to what you said. Find something that is within your budget. And if you really want that person, save up for it. Just like you're saving mm -hmm. up for a dress or you're saving up for those perfect shoes mm -hmm. to roll on stage, you save up for that perfect photo shoot that you want with that person. But make That's sure right. the connection is there before you spend the bukus of money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and one of the questions that was asked is, you know, what quality should a person look for when finding the right photographer? And I feel like with that question, it's a very wide range. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. It's probably a wide range because there are some people, there's some photographers that, that you know, they do X, Y, and Z and they do X, Y, and Z very well, but they may not do ABC very well. Um, exactly. Again, it kind of comes back to that whole research thing. It kind of comes back to, you know, what are they showing on their, you know, I, I try to make it a point to show everybody on my Instagram or on my stories yes. because I don't want to just show my highlight reel. Yeah, I, I don't, um, you know, you may see a picture and you may not, you know, and, and I've heard other people and people just dis probably disagree with that. They're like, Oh, you just need to show your best work. No, I don't want to just show my best work. I want to show all my work because I want to show everything that, that I have done because exactly. at the, at the end of the day, that's not being truly authentic if I'm just showing my best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I so I, I think that's another thing that you got to look for. You got to look for somebody that that um that you know shows a little bit of everything. You may not love everything that you see, or you may love it, but exactly. you know, um I, I think that I think that's part of it as well. Exactly. So we're gonna move straight on. I mean, you hit everything just on the head. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. I, have a, I have a tendency to over talk. No, but I love it because this is something that everyone needs to, to know about, especially when you're trying to find the right photographer, because I feel like that is something that sometimes yes. holds a lot of pageant title holders or pageant just competitors back when they're trying to find the right photographer and then they get something that they don't like. Well, and, and then they're and, like, upset yes. about it. And I, and I definitely think, you know, when you're looking for, you want somebody that's going to help get you noticed. You know, that's one of the things that I talk about too, is, you know, a headshot's not going to win you the pageant, but it can get you noticed. And yes. that's one of the things that's, that's, you know, it's on my website. It's one of the things that I talk about. I, I can't win a pageant for a girl. I, I cannot, you know, all I can do is get you noticed. And, yep. and, you know, when I flip through a program book and I have, and, and, and I used to, I would always go through and you, you scan it with your eyes. It's just like food. You know, you, you eat with your eyes first. So when you're scanning through that program book, you're looking at all those pictures and you're deciding who's going to make the top 10 based on those pictures alone before you ever even saw a girl hit the stage. We all do it because it's human nature. So set yourself up for success and find that photographer that is going to help you do that. Mm -hmm. So moving kind of with what you said, you know, how to prepare, set clients up for success and, you know, why you need to read a contract. So kind of going back up to the how to prepare, how should a client prepare for their photo shoot with Goodwin Photography specifically? You know, if you go look at my Instagram, I think the last thing I posted um, was tips <laughs> and I think I either posted it today or yesterday but okay. it was tips. one of those things was get your hair cut and colored about two weeks before your photo shoot get a good cut and color on your hair um you know uh don't come in here with hair that's uh, uh, that's long unless you're just wanting to do a whole a straight look I need you to get some face framing layers because otherwise you're going to have cotton candy. How many girls yes. have you seen that all their hair's here? And I'll, I'll talk to moms and I'm like, when you, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Before um, your photo shoot. Yes. Before <laughs> your photo shoot. So I've had moms come in here and she'll say, I don't know how you got her hair to do blah, blah, blah. And I mean, my stylists have to work extra hard. I am not by any means, any kind of licensed cosmetologist or hair and makeup artist. I'm, I'm here to say that right now. Yes. I work with some amazing people, but 
get those face framing layers, get that fresh cut and color, mm -hmm. because that's going to make your photos look 10 times better. You know, make sure you get a spray tan. Um, don't go to someplace new that you've never been before. Get Can I just pause you for a second? Yes. Please do not try something new before your photo shoot. I have yeah. seen this a lot lately. Please do not go to a new nail, nail salon, you know, when you're getting your nails done or trying anything new, even if you go to Walmart and get your nails. Please don't try nothing new. Please do not try a new hair stylist that is going to be cutting, trimming, doing your hair or dyeing it, whatever they have to do. Please don't try anything <laughs> new. Don't try any new products, tanning solutions, nothing. Nothing because that's going to possibly break your face out. Yeah, you're right. Because exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and talk to your the makeup artist and see what products that they're using and stuff. Just don't try nothing new. Okay, yeah. continue. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's that. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You know, get that spray tan, um, get your nails done, um, do those types of things. And, and, and there's there's more tips read the contract that I send, fill out the questionnaire. And that's not just for me. That's for any business, any photographer. You know, if they send you something, they're sending it to you because they want you to read it. I want to set you up for success. It's about you. It is not about me. You are investing through me in you. Yes. And that's why I send the things that I do because I want to make sure that that investment is sound and that investment is secure and it will be if you will read those things and you'll take note and you'll do those things you know pick out those clothes that that you you know you feel good in pick the things that you feel the best in interesting mm -hmm. necklines photograph well don't bring patterns patterns are terrible if you yeah. don't have anything but a white man's shirt or a denim shirt bring it <laughs> if all you've got work yeah, if all you got is a black or white tank top, bring it. If that's what you got, if you don't have anything with an interesting neckline and all you've got is a black and white tank top or a, a white button up, bring it. Because I can work with that a whole lot better than when you brought that polka dotted or that thing that's got all those flowers on it. I, I you know, I, I just, because when I look at that photo, Mm -hmm. I'm looking at that photo. The first thing that's going to pop off that page to me is how did I capture that girl's eyes and her expression? Oh, yes. I lost my light again. Um, <laughs> you know, how, how did, how did her expression come to me? Um, and so that's definitely one, that's definitely some of the things. So those tips are there. And I try to put those tips on my Instagram um, yes. so that, yeah, so that you can, you can have those and you'll know those, you know, the things to do, but, but, you know, I, I don't do the contracts. I don't do the questionnaires because I'm just like, Oh, I've got something to do today. I'll send it out. Yeah. I send it, I send it for, for a reason. Purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love how you said read everything that the photographer send to you because it is so important that you understand what they're wanting you to do prior to you getting into their in front of their cameras and yeah. they're setting you up for success just like the pageant coach is going to do just like yep. hair and makeup is going to do just like uh, you know the directors are going to do we're trying to set you up for success and that's what a photographer is trying to do so that on the day of your photo shoot you're not stressed out and it's no. coming through and yes. they can, you know she can be like yes you're you know giving you that inspiration during mm -hmm. that whole entire time which is something that i love that you do is that you talk to your girls during your i photo do shoot. I, I do because at the end of the day i feel like that photo shoot is kind of um it's the start of that confidence building you know mm -hmm. and then the, the 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 coaches can take over after that but i want to start with that confidence building i want yeah. you know I want them, I want to turn that camera around and I want them to see that's the glam version of themselves. It's yeah. not the, you know, the hat wearing, ponytail wearing, you know, that's the glam version. And it's okay to be that way. It's okay to be the glam version of you. It's okay to be the baseball cap wearing version of you. You know, there's several different versions, but, but I, I definitely want to do that. I, and I, and I want to encourage them in the process because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, when I'm encouraging them on the other end of the camera, they're going to, they're going to give me more genuine reactions and, yes. you know, and, and they're going to, and I help, you know, and I'll help a girl to move and, and let her know the little, little idiosyncrasies and the things that I like. Um, but, but I, I definitely like that. You know, I, I it, 
it's funny you were talking about that and we were talking about it earlier. I actually had a makeup artist one time that I was working with a girl and I was giving her those encouragements, uh, encouraging yes. words and saying those things. Mm -hmm. And this makeup artist actually, it's nobody I work with now. So don't think I'm talking about any of y'all out there. I love, I love my makeup artist. Love, 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 love. Um, so, but he actually said, why do you, why are you doing that? No photographer I ever work with does that. And I'm like, it's just, it's me. It's my, it's my personality. It's what I do. And I feel and like from a, from a, a pageant contestant's point of view, I would love that. That feeds me energy. That gives me the energy to just turn up the heat in my photos. Absolutely. When the photographer is really pumping me up. So I and feel that's like exactly. Yes. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, you, cause you, because that, I feel like that that's starting the experience of yes. your pageant journey to whatever, you know, whatever system that you're going to, to be doing, you want to feel that you want to feel that way. I mean, I don't know about, I, I do. I mean, I wish I had somebody talking to me in my mirror every day, you know, putting my makeup on, tell me, you know, mirror, mirror on the wall. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, yeah. I, I can't believe that even, that was even something that was a thought that even came to anyone's mind in the fact of that, but, but you know, you know, and, and I, I, I will say, I mean, a lot, I know, I guess a lot has changed in the industry maybe, but I think it made her uncomfortable and yeah. therefore, you know, and therefore she projected that to the, you know, and, and I'm yeah. just like, you know what, well then obviously I wasn't the right, I was not the right photographer for her to be part yeah. of it. So yeah, that connection just may not have yeah. been there, yeah. but I can, you can ask so many girls you know, if you have somebody that's being your hype woman, even that's even though that's the photographer, they're going to want them talking to them, making them feel comfortable. And that's Absolutely. a cool thing that you do. And, I, you know, I know a couple of other photographers that do the exact same thing and that pumps you up. So being Absolutely. able to find that photographer that does that um, and has that connection with you. But, yeah, no, I love that we were able to talk to them about how to prepare um, really quickly, kind of from the. Uh, from a photographer's or from a client's point of view um, or not clients, I'm sorry, photographer's point of view, how can a photographer get prepared, especially if they're like new to the industry or it, just in general, how can they prepare themselves? Like what's some tips that you can like hint to them if they're new to photography and they're really wanting to start this, and you know, um, they want that to go out on a limb and do pageant photography or, you know, any type of headshots. Well, I think the, I think the thing that we see, or at least I see, I, I don't, I shouldn't say we, I think the thing that I see in the industry is that, you know, newer people um, and not quite understanding what it is that the pageant industry is about. Um, you know, if, if they want to get started in it, my first thing is reach out to some of these pageants. Maybe you start on the local level. Um, yeah. And when I say local, I mean, you know, um, uh, you start out with some of these smaller systems that, yeah. that are maybe in your area, do some research, um, start out with some of those smaller systems and see if you could actually sponsor doing some crown shots for them. And, and then, and, and, you know, and take a look at that, you know, I actually had a couple of photographers reach out to me not too terribly long ago, uh, wanting to know if I would critique their work, yeah. you know, that makes me a little nervous, uh, just because, you know, I, I know how direct I can be and, and I don't want to scare anybody yeah. but at the same time. I wished I had had that when I started, because mm -hmm. when I started, I didn't have that. You know, um, I just had I just figured out what I wanted to do. And I just worked really hard to get there. And yeah. You know, but I think one of the things, too, that I see is a lot of times I see people retouching work. Not well. And, and I, and that's, you know, and, and that's my biggest thing is that they're retouching and they're not learning how to use Photoshop um, yeah. and maybe, you know, I have no problem and I'm going to touch on this for just one second. I have no problems with people yeah. using um, artificial intelligence to do research, re retouching. Um, I use it yeah. some in, in my business. Um, you know, there are some great plugins and different things and apps and you can make it all work together. 
Yeah. I use a combination of all kinds of different things. I use a combination of about four different programs. Okay, um, yeah. And it depends on it depends on what that client's looking for. And mm -hmm. I'm listening as they're getting their hair and makeup done because I'm listening. Do they want something, you know, this, that, and the, you know, what are they looking for? Oh, so that's, that's I'm so real. Cool. I'm really tuning in to what, you know, what they're talking about and, and, you know, and if they don't talk about it, then I, then I'll certainly ask them. But, but I think, you know, having your work critiqued by somebody, um, yeah. having your work critiqued by just other girls in the industry, um, you know, um, if you can bring, if you can possibly get a girl to come see you who maybe she's a veteran in the industry, you know, have her come in. Um, I'm going to be working with a brand new makeup artist here in a couple of weeks and I'm bringing yeah. in a couple of my uh, clients for her to work with because why? I want to see what she's going to do on them. And then I need their genuine feedback um, yeah. about, and then I can, you know, and I can work with that particular makeup artist. Um, but um, see, I told you I'd get off topic. Um, <laughs> but, no, you're good. But, but I think, but I think, you know, I, I think if a photographer is trying to get into the industry, I think mm -hmm. the number one thing is, is sponsor some pageants around there and yeah. figure out if it's something that you really want to do or like to do. Um, you know, pageant, pageant industry is not for the faint of heart. Um, I've been doing this a long time. Um, mm -hmm. I've watched a lot of people come and go, um, you know, I, I, you, you got to understand that client. You've got to understand that, that pageant clients are picky and that's oh, okay. Yes. I'm picky yes. too. But at the end of the day, a pageant client is spending a lot of money and it's mm -hmm. basically like going to a casino and you're deciding I'm going to gamble because this is, this is what I'm doing. I'm gambling. I'm going to spend X number of dollars on these things in order to get me to this pageant. I may or may not win. Yeah. And that's the gamble that they're taking. Yes. And, and that's what, and so, so when a client comes to me, you know, I have to know that that's money that they're, that's their gambling money and, and they're spending it with me and I appreciate them doing that. So I've got to give them the best product that I can, um, you know, and, and that's kind of the way I look at it. it, it mm -hmm. I know it probably does. It, it may, maybe people are like, that doesn't make any sense, but in my mind, well, I, I think it makes, I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing. You are spending money out. Mm -hmm. For that one time on stage. Uh -huh. And there's going to be one winner. <laughs> there's going to be one winner out of how many other girls that's in your division or at right. that pageant. Right. And one winner. It, so, so why not? Family. So why not in the process, which I, we talked about earlier in the pre-show a little bit. So why not in the process, develop your leadership skills instead of, you know, yes, you're gambling, but you're gambling and the odds are not in your favor. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, let's just face it. They're not in your favor because yeah. the other 10 girls are standing on that stage may just be as pretty as you are. And exactly. they may be as smart as you are. And they may have the best talent or evening gown or whatever. So why not in the process develop those leadership skills that are going to help you in life. And then when you walk away from that, you have learned. Maybe you didn't win, but but you learned. You learned exactly. Taken away. Now, I'm glad you said that because I, I've preached that all the time on the radio talk show and recently here on our new YouTube channel. Is uh, if you don't win, that's okay. Every girl has their day, but take something that you can learn from it and apply it to the next pageant that you're going to participate in. Yep. Okay. I had a, I had a, I had a, um, one of my formers and I'll call her the OGG. You may remember her Burgundy. Okay. And I'm going to mention her and, and I've not, I've, I've tried to not mention anybody else, but I'm going to mention this. Do you remember Amy Maddox? She's yes. Amy, Miller, Amy Miller now. Yes. Um, dear friend of mine. Uh, she's a pageant coach down in Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she had a, there was, I think it was a miss Florida that said this to her. Um, uh -huh. but she said, not every Miss America wears the crown. And I'll never forget her. So right. Right. Yes. Because it's not about, and I used to tell the girls that and you may have remembered this because I think you did compete for me years ago. Um, 
you know, the I beginning was, of my woman phase, attempting a, yes. to be a woman. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, I used to sit on my stage and I used to look at those girls and I used to say to them, there's only going to be one of you guys that win. And, but what's, what matters is what you do tomorrow. So it doesn't matter if you win or not, but what do you do tomorrow? Are you going to lay there and are you going to whine and cry? Or are you going to still get out and you're going to do what it is that you want to do? Yes. Pick yourself up. Um, you know, there's been many times in my career doing this that I've just wanted to go, I'm quitting. I'm selling all my camera, quitting, quitting. You, my husband's heard it before, but you know what? Yes. Give me about 24 hours and then I'll quit having my pity party. And because somebody that I saw went and shot with somebody else. Well, guess what? It didn't mean they didn't like me any less. It just meant yeah. they wanted to go shoot with them too. So quit yeah. having your pity party. So you didn't win the pageant. What did you learn from it? Exactly. And I mean, we all are there, you know, we all have been there and we, and I understand, but you know, don't, don't just give up. Don't just quit just because, you know, it didn't happen. I had somebody that, that recently did something and, and they didn't do as well as they thought they would. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I even said it was pretty arrogant because, you know, they, they made it pretty far and there's a whole bunch of girls standing behind them that didn't make it at all that would have gladly taken their place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it was a pretty arrogant statement thinking that they should have been done better. And I'm, and I, you know, and I, I love this girl with all my heart, but it's like, pick yourself up, have your pity party for your 24 That's hours, true. but pick yourself back up. Sorry. I went through that. No, no, I completely understand. Cause I've, I've been through that phase where I went to a pageant and uh, was top 15. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I, I didn't have time to cry because I had other opportunities laying. I said, okay, I'll try this type, this pageant. I went to another pageant, got top 15 again. Then I went to a pageant, got first runner up and turned around and got first runner up again. I could have easily quit at yes, that time. Yes. Moment. This all happened in a span of a year. Yes. And the only reason why I went back to the other pageants, because I promised one of my girls that I would go <laughs> compete if she won the state pageant. That girl won the state pageant, her first state pageant. <laughs> you had to. And I was like, oh, man. So I had to go compete and I got first runner up and it was either I sink or I swim. And I was yes. like, you know what? Keep it going. And the next pageant that I went to, I won the world pageant and I was like, oh, my gosh, if I would have just been like I quit, then I wouldn't have done good. I wouldn't that wouldn't have been a good life lesson for me. But I picked myself up and I kept going. And I think that's important that you said that and that you mentioned yes. that and hearing it from a photographer's point of view from a former director's point of view is very important because I don't think, a, I mean, you're my first photographer I've ever had on my radio talk show no. or on my YouTube channel. So that's exciting within itself, but being able to hear it from your point of view, that gives them another view other than hearing it from a coach or from a hair and makeup artist or from, mm -hmm. you know, a director. They always hear that, but they never hear from the photographers because all they think is the, the photographer knows only about pictures that they don't right. understand the logic of pageantry. Yeah. I mean, and there is some logic in pageantry. Absolutely. I mean, there is some logic to, you know, to it for sure. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's a leadership development, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, organization, you know, uh, you know, our, our industry, it's a leadership development industry. And, and that's the thing that, that we need to be doing. We need to, and we, we as industry professionals need to be edifying these young women. We need to be Definitely. lifting them up and we need to be, you know, on their, on their team and in their corner. Um, yeah. I mean, you just, because I mean, only one winner is going to happen and, you, you know, I mean, and so what did you learn from that? What can you gain from that? You know, Cry when you get back to your hotel room. Just don't cry on a stage. Don't make. Yeah, don't, don't make cry on stage. Don't cry out in public. You can do that in your room. You can do whatever you want in your room. But the fact that you even got on stage is super exciting. Look, some people yes. don't even have the courage to do that. No, but you know, don't. you're talking about everybody being in each other's corner, and that that moves us to our next topic, which is the pageant industry for vendors, the myths, and what we really do. Um, and we kind of talked about this and we we're really getting deep into it <laughs> during our pre-show. But I really want to talk about this topic right here because there are a lot of myths that are in the pageant industry that, as we were talking about earlier, that you can 
you have to get a certain type of dress or hair and makeup artist or coach to participate in this pageant, in this pageant, in this pageant. And at the end of the day, whoever is showing up and showing out, it doesn't matter because you can always beat whoever they're saying or the myths of you've got to have this person, this person, this vendor to be successful. You've got to have find your own success and show up and show out. And if those judges don't like you that day, it's okay. Pick yourself up like we said and keep moving on. I had, I, I have a couple of things that, that I remember from that. First of all, I remember being at uh, when I was a director and one of my girls Literally, she was eating her cheeseburger in my hotel room after the pageant was over and she was fine. You know, I had two other title holders that were not fine, but she was fine. And she just went, I just wasn't, I just, I just was not what the judges were looking for. I wasn't what the judges were looking for. And I, yeah. and I remember thinking, wow, that's a very mature attitude. And that was exactly what it was. She, she wasn't freaked out. It didn't make yeah. her any less of a person. She just, you know, she's like, I was not what they were looking for. And that very well may be. Um, and then the, the, the other, the other thing I, I had heard and probably on the opposite side of that was I had heard this little girl get very upset because she didn't get to book the hair and makeup artist that she thought was the hair and makeup artist at the pageant. And therefore, well, I'm not going to win if I can't book that person. And you know, I, I've heard that a lot. And I even remember several years ago when I was um, the official photographer at a pageant and, you know, there were girls that thought they had to have headshots with me to win. Well, because the girls were winning. Well, most of the girls that were in the pageant had headshots done by me. So statistically speaking, it was a pretty good odds for me. Yeah. That a girl that I shot was going to win. That's all it is. It's not about, oh, you got to go get a dress here. Or you got to go get yeah. uh, the, your hair and makeup done by this person, or you got to go coach with this person, you know, yeah. and, and that's, I have, I have tried to say that anytime somebody will give me a microphone, I have tried to say that. I don't always get to shoot everybody that I want to. I don't. Yeah. I don't always, you know, I don't always get to shoot people that I really, you know, like, gosh, I'd like to have her in front of my lens. Um, it doesn't always happen for me, you know, yeah. um, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, it, it's okay. And if you don't win that pageant, it's okay. You didn't not win because your dress didn't come from store ABC. Yeah. You know, that's exactly. not why it's because you, were just not what the judges were looking for that day. And you know what? You're probably not going to know what the judges are looking for because everybody's different and everybody likes something different. And, you know, so that's why you have to go into that pageant with, yeah, you know, you can be disappointed and you need to be a little selfish and you need to stay focused on yourself, but you can't look at it and go, oh, well, I didn't win because I didn't use that sponsor or that this or that that. That's just, that's just not the right way to be thinking. And it's, it's funny you say that because I had a director um, and you actually know her. You have shot with her a lot of times <laughs> and I'll have to text you her name because you're going to crack up when I, when I start uh, talking about her and I text you her name during the show. But she told me when I was representing for a fraternity as, um, as one of their queens and uh, she told me, it doesn't, and told all the contestants, it doesn't matter about the dress because a girl can come on here with the same exact dress and yours may be $2,000 and the other person's may be $50, but it looks similar and y'all may have the same dress on, but it's about the person who works it the best. That's it. And, and I, that was my first time having a realization of, okay, so I don't have to go to a certain vendor and get my dress. I can go wherever I want to go. I can go and pick whatever I want to pick as far because, as hedge, because the, judges, the judges don't know the, the don't judges, know. the judges don't nine times out of 10. They don't know if, if they see a certain dress, they don't know that you bought that brand new or yeah. they don't know that you bought it 
Um, they don't know that you rented it. You could have borrowed it. You could have paid $50 for it. It exactly. could be a $5,000 dress. It's been in somebody's closet for the last 10 years and you took it out and took it to a seamstress and redid it for all they know. I mean, they don't know. It may look similar, but yeah, judges don't know. They don't, you know, in all my years of being around pageants, I've never known judge to say to me, oh, yeah, they told us that we had to pick somebody that spent $5,000 on a dress yes, and, they that don't know. To, and that went to X, Y, and Z and went to ABC. They, they don't know. And they're, you know, all there, you know, and, and even when I was a director, I would tell my judges, you know, in my judges charge what I gave them, you know, I would say, these, this is, this is the type of title holder that I need. I need you to find that title holder in this group of 17 girls. Mm -hmm. You know, um, she needs to be manageable. She needs to be blah, blah, yes. blah. You know, I mean, you can use the word beautiful beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. If they thought that, you know, the dark haired girl was beautiful, if they thought the brown skin girl was beautiful, if they thought the blonde with the blue eye, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. everybody's definition of that is, is different. So, you know, I, I just encourage young ladies when they're, when they're walking in these pageant shoes, I encourage them very much to not get so caught up in every little detail that yes. they get so caught up in their head that they have to use this, 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 and this, because, you know, yes, you need to be prepared. Absolutely. And if that person that you're going to for that particular thing is the right person for you, then go. Yeah. But I never want anybody to come see me and do headshots with me because they felt like they had to. Exactly. Because the experience for them and for me is not going to be good. Exactly. You don't want to feel like you're having to be forced because they think that you're going to, they're going to win just because you did the photos. You know, that's not what it's about. And kind of on that flip side of everything with us talking about the pageant industry with myths and everything, talking about, and, and we kind of talked about this also earlier, the vendors, you have to do your part and not be there just for yourself. We're here, as we said earlier, and as Chris, out of her own words, is setting the client up for success. You know, having that village, it takes a village. And I was talking to one of these other coaches earlier today, and we we're talking about how some vendors are there just for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's not okay. We're, they're paying us for a service. They are investing, the, a client is investing in themselves through you. Exactly. And I can't say that enough. And, and, and I mean, Burgundy, you're hitting the nail on the head. They're, you know, if, if they're not, if, if you meet somebody and you get the impression that they're just there to put, yes, it's a business. Yes. Let me, yeah. let me say that it's a business. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we got to, we put food on our table here, so I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody. Okay. Yes. But, <laughs> Cause I'm eating that pal's Barbie dog. <laughs> Maybe go get me one after we can finish this. But the reality of it is, is, you need to be there, there for your client. And yes. maybe people think that that's crazy. Maybe that there's people out there that are like, mm, I don't care. I'm just getting, I'm just getting the money. Yeah. That's fine. If that's your philosophy, but that's not mine. If, I have to lay my head down at night and know every night when I lay down my head that I did not overcharge a client that I didn't, that what I'm giving to that client is, something that I can go, you know what, we did a good job today and I, I made some money and they've got great headshots. And I, I just hope everybody in the industry feels that way. And I hope the girls that are in the industry, I hope that they feel that way. I hope that they feel like that I'm in their corner. Yes. You, and you, again, when they're, when they're older and they look back at these photos, you don't want them to see that that they had a photo of somebody or just in general had a coach or anybody, um, a director that they felt like they were just, you're just there just to pay my bills or if you're just there. I've just had countless number of girls actually say to me something like that about vendors later you know on what? in life. You know what? You're not lying because I've also 
um, have had people come and say that about different vendors. And I'm just kind of like, what happened? Like, why? Why? We, we're here to help them, even though, yes, that's, you know, as you said, it's a business. But at the end of the day, it's about that individual person that is being successful. We want them to be successful and that they're filtering that through us. They're coming to us for help. They're coming to us to make them feel beautiful and to make them successful mm -hmm. or for them to reach their goal that they want. Yes. And when when they're long and they're they're old and stuff, I want them to be like back in my days when I was a pageant girl, Chris Goodwin did that photo for me and I looked hot. So you yes. see this, baby? That's, <laughs> exa that's, that's exactly right. Or or when when they're when they landed that first job and they're mm -hmm. like, you know what? Burgundy, I just want to tell you, I got that job that I wanted so much, and yes. you're that you being with me and doing all those inter that interview prep work. That's what helped me to land that job. So I just want to say thank you. I mean, those are the kind of things that you know. Those are the kind of things that that my heart wants to hear. You know, mm -hmm. my heart wants to hear those things. I I can't help but invest in people. Um, that's just, that's just who I am. Um, and I probably get my heart broken and I get my, you know, I wear, believe it or not, everybody thinks I'm all this tough and I'm not warm and fuzzy and I'm probably not because I do guard. Um, but I wear but my heart, to. I wear my heart right here. And, mm -hmm. and the fact is, is that most, I think most people in pageant, the pageant industry do that yep. because, I think we are also looking for that edification, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I was just having a conversation the other day about my my retirement. I, I don't know when that's going to be. I, you know, five Never, years. Ago, we need you to be a photographer forever. <laughs> five, you know, five years ago, I was saying, well, I'm going to be done by the time I'm 55. And, you know, and now I'm like, well, I'm going to be 60 in five years. And I'm like, Mm, you know, um, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be walking around with a with one of those, you know, rollers, and I'll be rolling. Okay, let me take your head shot, and I'll be, I'll be, you know, um, <laughs> but, uh, by that time I'll have a tripod and I'll have something that clicks it on, you know. But, um, but at any rate, I, I just, I, I would hope that that, you know, people can look back and know that there are people in the industry that genuinely did help them and genuinely cared. And, yeah. and maybe that comes from me being a director and my MAO background um, because, you know, I, I did care and I did, you know, I was involved. I, when I, <laughs> I have to tell this quick story. Um, when I was a sponsor for Miss Virginia America, uh -huh. um, I would go, they always had this breakfast the next morning after the girl got crowned. Yeah. And I could, and, and, and all the people that were there to, that were sponsors, you got to go up and stand beside Miss Virginia, you know, and she was, that was basically her first appearance. And you'd stand beside Miss Virginia and you'd tell her what you were going to be giving, gifting her with and congratulate her and things like that. I couldn't do it, girl. I would have tears streaming down my face <laughs> every single time. And, and I used to feel really weird about that because I was yeah. like, Gosh, Kristen, why can you not? I mean, it's like me seeing Tigger at Disney World. I cry. Um, but at the end of the day, it's because I knew what yeah. it was that was getting ready to happen to her life. And yeah. and I loved seeing that. I loved being a director. Um, if if I if it wasn't for the fact that I have this photography business, I probably would still be one. Um, yeah. Because I loved being able to help young ladies get to wherever it was they were trying to go. Um, you know, and, and so I guess that's part of the reason that I have the philosophy that I do about, you know, um, the pageant world is, yeah. is because of that. Um, but anyway, and my favorite color is teal. <laughs> I just, for you. Yes, you were wearing, <laughs> and here I'm wearing black and gray as, as normal, but you know, I try when on the show, I try to match what every, like whatever, Person you're you're matching logo. my logo. I was going to yes. say you're matching my. I'm like, okay, that's that's pretty sharp. I, I picked. Yeah, I just I was just picking up on that. I'm like, you got that's my favorite color. So, yeah. <laughs> but 
but no, um, no, you hit so many key points today. Like, oh my goodness, you know, and our next topic is, and I know everybody else is going to want to know where will you be like what pageants on, you know, on-site location sessions, like how can they get involved? Like, what is the deeds? We need the 411. You need need to get the the 411, the 411. Uh, Obviously, I mean, you can go to my website, which is uh, pageantheadshots.com to book and you book online. Everything's done online. Um, all open sessions are on the calendar right now. So if you if you go to pageantheadshots.com, it's going to give you um, it's going to oh, it's going to give you any um, any open sessions that I have. I book at ten o'clock and I book at one o'clock. I book Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If there it's not on the calendar, it means it's not available because a it's already booked or b I'm on location or c I'm taking some time off because girl can't work twenty four seven through sixty five. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, my, my next travel on location session is actually coming up, um, in April. I know you have um, so many every time. I'm just, this is just, decided. I just got back from Jackson in Arkansas. I was going to so, say, every time I go on Facebook, I see you have booked with another collaboration and you're going here and there. And I'm like, I'm trying well, so, to keep up. <laughs> I know. Well, the first collaboration that's coming up is actually happening at my studio. <clears throat> and I think there are three, um, it, it, it's almost sold out, but there's three sessions I think left. And that's with Holt Avery out of North Carolina. He's a makeup artist and a photographer. He's a, he's a fairly new photographer, um, yeah. fair, very talented photographer, um, f- incredibly talented makeup artist. Yes. Um, wanted to work with him for a while now. We're finally getting to do a collab. Um, it, it, when I posted about it, it, I posted about it six weeks ago and um, everything, but I think four or five sessions booked up just like that. Um, I believe I, it. I yeah. believe it. I've I got, some of my girls during a pageant, um, I was like, book him as soon as you can. Yes, yes, him. yes, yes. So, so he's coming, he's coming here to my home studio and that's on um, March 30th. March 31st and April 1st. So I've got him here on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday is completely booked. Um, one availability is left on Friday and there's two on, uh, there's two left on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's what's coming up next. Um, then I've got in April, um, April the 15th, I'm working with um, Taylor Wilhoyt and Whitney. Um, wow. She's all, all Yes. Yes, all dolled up. Um, yes. Taylor is completely booked on that Sunday, but I have three spots left with Whitney on that Saturday, and that's going to be in Lexington. You got some heavy hitters. Oh <laughs> my goodness! Well, I mean, you know, I, I like collaborations because I love what it is that other makeup artists bring to the table. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just, I do. I love that. I and, love um, because you're gonna have different looks. Oh yeah. Same photographer. Oh yeah. Different looks. Oh yeah. I love yeah. That. And, and it's just, you know, it's, it's, it, that's kind of exciting. Um, and then I'm going to, I have, I haven't gotten this on the um, calendar yet. Well, let me see. Wait a minute. I am going the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. I'll be working with Liz Everett Glam out of Tampa in, Tam- in Tampa, Florida. Um, we've got 10, no, we've got eight sessions. We've got six left. Um, so if you want to get in with that, if you're in, I, think, Florida, I feel like you just posted that one though. Recently. We did. We did. We just, we just got everything together in the last couple of days, um, at the end of, at the end of the week. And so we just got that posted over the weekend. Um, I am heading back to Arkansas. I'm heading back to Conway, Arkansas, um, the first weekend in May. Um, I believe it's the fifth and the sixth, whatever that Friday and Saturday is. Working again with Carrie Woods, um, who I just w- worked with in Arkansas um, when I was there. Um, I'm going to be at America's Majestic Miss, which is at the end of. Yes. Um, <laughs> I love spot that we stay. stay We have our little spot. I love them. I love what they create with that pageant. Cindy is uh, Cindy Claus. They call her Cindy Claus. Uh, Literally, literally, they call her Cindy Claus, ladies, because she absolutely just spoils 
her girls rock. She does. I mean, she really does. Yep. Um, her daughter, daughter Savannah and Kevin and their crew. Yes. Fabulous. Then, fabulous uh, daughter, they, they really are. They treat you like royalty yeah. when you they attend. Do. And I just, I love that crew of um, AMM. Amazing. Yeah, crew. I do too. Well, I can see it with then, uh, Savannah. There's, um, and then um, in, I'm going to be somewhere in July. They haven't officially announced it yet, so I can't really say. But it's a fairly large pageant system that happen, that's happening in Orlando. Um, and I'm going to be... My wheels are thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I am going to be doing something there, and I'll be doing headshots there. Um, so I'll be back in the Orlando area then. So I'll be able to, to do headshots there. Um, and those are going to be kind of a, you book your hair and makeup and you come see me. Um, yeah. that, that'll be a, you know, so because there's several hair and makeup artists that are going to be there. So if um, we're, we're trying to work it out where so there's some, there's going to be some girls that'll have some downtime. Okay. Um now I'm trying to think. Um, of course, I'm I'm going to UIM um, in Virginia Beach in September. Um, I probably got something going on in August that I'm just not thinking about right now. And then I get to go see my girl Madison in Nashville. We haven't put this out yet, but Boom, that's when I'm coming. Then <laughs> we just we just finalized. Um, but I'm working with Madison in Nashville. I want to say it's September 16th, and whatever that Saturday and Sunday is. Okay. Um, I believe it's the 16th and 17th. It's not on the calendar yet. All of these collaborations, when you go to pageantheadshots.com and you go to book your headshot, all of these collaborations will be listed there as well as just the normal one where to come to my studio. So if I'm doing a collaboration that's not with... You know, Mindy, Shamel, Sherry, uh, Journey, who are the makeup artists that I typically work with here. If yeah. I'm doing something and um, and it's a collaboration that's not using one of them, either here at the studio or yeah. either here or on location, because Mindy goes with me a lot of times on location. Everything's going to be on the website so you can get there. Um, awesome. You've got a lot of opportunities for our audience and just for anybody that needs headshots. You've got amazing hair and makeup artists, not only that's going to be on site that you're collaborating with, but also that's in the studio. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have to make sure that you head over to pageantheadshots.com. Um, I have it listed below right here. Also, you can follow on Instagram at Goodwin Photo G. Or go to the Facebook page yep. at Goodwin Photography. Um, so you want to make sure that you book your next headshots with Krisna. You don't want to miss that opportunity. I know I'm getting in on uh, the action with these photos. <laughs> I don't know who I'm coming to, but I trust every last one of your hair and makeup artists. <laughs> well, and, and the fact is, if you're a hair and makeup artist, I'm always looking for good hair and makeup artists to work with. So if you're local to me and you want to work with me, I would love that. Um, typically I usually bring, like to bring a couple of um, models in and I'll kind of like to see what it is that you're doing. So if you want to do that here at the studio, I am open to that. So if you're a hair and makeup artist and you're watching this and you're interested in, um, in working with me, I, I'm, I'm open to that. Just, you know, send me a DM on Instagram or you can send me a message at goodwinphotog at gmail.com. Um, you know, if you're a makeup artist listening and you want me to come to your location, there's some there's some people in Texas that are wanting me. There's some people in, in Maryland that have talked to me. But if you're a makeup artist in those locations and you want me to come. Oh, I forgot. I'm actually going to North Carolina too. I think in August, that's what it was. I'm going to North Carolina in August. I'm going to be working with Devin. Um, we haven't finalized the, the, yeah. the everything. Yes. But, but yeah, so I knew there was something in August I was forgetting, <laughs> but at any rate, um, but yeah, if you're a hair and makeup artist in a location and you're like, I need a photographer, um, let's talk. Um, I'm, I'm all about hitting the road. I, I try to, I try to, I'm usually home a couple weekends and I try to be gone a couple of weekends. Yeah. It's not that I don't love my husband. He just knows that's what I do. So sometimes he gets to come with me. Um, so, um, the lucky few of you guys, but, uh, but yeah, I, um, I love what I do. 
Well, we can tell that you love what you do. And I'm so happy that you were able to participate on the show. We will be sharing this so much this week because I think it's so important that our title holders, our contestants, even our people that are vendors that um, can see this show are going to be able to see it from a photographer's point of view of everything that we've talked about from pageantry all the way to headshots and everything like that but also being able to hear what's coming up next like I probably should have said this at the beginning of the show (laughs) so they can go on and start booking because I mean now that it's out there it's going to be going quick and I mean before you know it it's going to be 2024 I know. I know. I was just talking to my husband about that the other day. I mean, it's just like, okay, we're almost at the end of March. Exactly. And I'm already starting to plan things in the fall. I, I get it. I feel very, with my other business for the, in the wedding industry, I'm, I'm already booking for 2024. And I'm just like, wait, it's still 2023. Just let me. <laughs> I know. Get, I know. Get this done. So no, but I, I'm so happy, Chris. Thank that, you. I got to have you on the show. Thank you so much for participating. Again, Thank everybody, you. down below, book your next session, or even if she's going to be collaborating with somebody at pageantsheadshots.com, head over to the Instagram, do your research, talk to Krisna personally to get that feel. Read your um, contracts. Yes, read the contracts and don't try nothing new. <laughs> but go to the Instagram at Goodwin Photo G and then Facebook Goodwin Photographer. So thank you so much. I, I just love you. I've always loved you. So thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Burgundy. Bye, You're guys. Welcome. Bye. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was Krishna Goodwin with Goodwin Photography. Oh my goodness. She she tore it up on here. <laughs> she she did she did it. And I'm so happy that I've had my first photographer on the show and that it was Krishna, someone that I've hold in high standards that has phenomenal photos and that has a great connection wherever she lands and wherever she is at. Um, so thank you so much again, Krishna. Remember to go over to pageantheadshots.com. That is linked down below. Also follow the Instagram at Goodwin Photography. I mean, that's Goodwin Photo G. And then the Facebook, which is Goodwin photography. So make sure that you follow all those social media sites. Uh, Please remember to follow, like, and subscribe our YouTube channel. We are definitely fastly growing this, but also you have an opportunity to head over to our radio talk show that has 4.5 million followers. And we want to make sure that you're able to uh, go over there and listen to some of the things that we have over there as well. Follow us on our Instagram account and our Facebook, which is at Crown Talk with B-Y-R-G-U-N-D-Y. And then you can head over to our website to see everything that we have to offer at Crown Talk with B-Y-R-G-U-N-D-Y dot square dot site. And if you want to be on the radio talk show, go over to blogtalkradio.com slash CTWV and the number two. Thank you to all of our fans, supporters, viewers, listeners, and readers for your continuous support. And I leave you with my favorite quote, you're never too young to be a role model. Thank <laughs> you.